Welcome back to Devotions by Christian Outdoors with Pete Rogers. Today we're going to talk about a topic that a lot of people get uncomfortable with, but it's important that we discuss it. I'm calling this one, How Much Does It Cost? I'm going to start reading Proverbs chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. And it says, My son, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments. For length of days and years of life and peace they will add to you. Let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them around your neck, write them on a tablet of your heart, so you will find favor and good success in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. Honor the Lord with your wealth and with your first fruits of all you produce. Then your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will be bursting with wine. My son, do not despise the Lord's discipline or be weary of his reproof. For the Lord reproves him whom he loves and as a father, as a father, the son in whom he delights. There's only one thing that I really don't care for when it comes to the holiday Thanksgiving, and that is that we eat turkey every day until Christmas, and then we eat ham every day until New Year's. I prefer when I sit down for a meal for it to be new food, not something that's been reheated seven times. And I guess that comes from growing up with my mother, who was the queen of Tupperware. We would eat leftovers, and then we would eat leftovers of the leftovers, and then leftovers of the leftovers of the leftovers, until there was no trace of that item anywhere. Over the years, I have been able to counsel a great number of people, and I've talked about a variety of subjects in a myriad of circumstances. There have been few things people have not told me about themselves and their thoughts and actions. I mean, people have shared virtually everything. From moments of infidelity, I've listened to people who struggle with addiction to drugs, alcohol, pornography, confessions of step-parents being attracted to their stepchildren, I've listened to failed businesses, bankruptcies, divorces, grief beyond measure when parents bury their children. I don't believe in counseling session. Any question is off limits. But if you really want to get someone riled up, if you want to see the hackles on their neck bristle and get furious with you, ask them about their tithes. I've learned over the years that people know very little about what God expects of them. And when it comes to the tithe, we are perhaps the most ignorant of all, and the modern church has failed in that regard. We instructed, we are instructed by Scripture to teach the Word fully, not to just pick and choose what Scripture to teach, but to teach all of it. I think there are many misconceptions when it comes to tithe, and for the sake of simplicity, we want to look at three of these misconceptions, and hopefully this morning give you a little bit of education as to the importance of it. The first misconception is that it's voluntary. The second one is that there's a set amount. And the third one is whose money is it? Is is it anyway? So the first we're going to look at is it voluntary for disciples of Christ. The answer is an enthusiastic. No, it's not just as we're told to pray, to study, to repent. We're also told in God's word that we're to give one tenth of our income to the church. In Malachi chapter 3, verse 8, Malachi writes, Will a man rob God? Yet you rob me. And you ask, how do we rob you? And he says, in your tithes and offerings. Again, in Proverbs 3, 9 that we read earlier this morning, Honor the Lord with your wealth, with your first fruits of all your crops. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing, and your vats will brim, bursting with new wine. Numbers chapter 18, Leviticus 27, Deuteronomy 12, and others, we see the law instructing people to give one-tenth of their wealth to God. It doesn't stop there. In fact, for many, the New Testament increases the amount. Many scholars agree that Paul tells us to give more freely. He's implying that the tithe is the minimum, and we should give more freely out of our love for Christ. When we consider all that Christ sacrificed for us, we should share this with others. Second Corinthians 9, 6 through 10, Paul says this. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. Whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, 
not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. The second mixed conception revolves around the actual number. If the Old Testament says first fruits and one tenth, but the New Testament says give freely out of our abundance, why do we emphasize one tenth? One tenth is a lot, a lot of you will say, but actually it's, it's, it's not. And it's always amazed me when this conversation arises that people complain about giving God one tenth of their income and at the same time think nothing of tipping a server 20% of the price of their meal or tipping a cab driver 20% for the fare of the fare of the, of the ride. Our society has taught us that we're supposed to tip a percentage of the bill to help pay the staff. Well, that's another subject for another day. But many of these same people balk at giving God 10% of their income. And I ask, why should God get any less? In the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki, he emphasizes the importance of paying yourself first. Before you make your mortgage payment, your car payment, insurance, to pay yourself first. And we're not going to debate that point. But his idea is that you are the most important asset. So why not pay yourself first? You're working hard to earn an income for your livelihood. But I want to take this a step further. Why don't we pay God first? In today's modern electronic world of direct deposits, it's so easy to pay God first. Our family has been tithing electronically for years. The tithe is set up as an automatic withdrawal, just like my mortgage and other bills. It comes out at the beginning of the month. And once you start this, your budget is easy. Actually, it comes out every twice a month. Every time I get paid, 10% of that is sent directly to the church as a tithe. God does deserve God does not deserve our leftovers. Why do we think it's all right to put God last on the list? Is he less important? Which brings us to the third misconception of tithing. Whose money is it anyway? If we believe that all blessings come from God, then then the obvious answer is 100% of the money is God's, but he allows us to keep 90% and to give him 10%. That's what Malachi is referring to when he talks about robbing God. When we give anything less than 10% of our gross income, we are robbing God because 10% of what you earn is his. It is what he decrees. And really, and you look at the total picture, God is right. 10% is very little. As I've been told many times, and I heard this somewhere, so I cannot claim it as my own, but God can do more with 90% than you can with 100%. Tithing, take, tithing takes discipline. It takes courage. It takes a lifestyle change. It takes practice. Just like prayer, study, repentance, and forgiveness, being a disciple isn't easy. But then again, nothing worth having really is. Thank you for listening to Devotions by Christian Outdoors with Pete Rogers. Tune in next Wednesday for another episode. Until then... May God richly bless you and your family.